This is my Epiphone SG400 from the late 90s. I always felt that the guitar lacked a little bit of power. So it looks angry, it looks evil, it looks like a devil's guitar. But when I plugged it in, it always left me wanting a little bit more. It was a little lackluster. So what I'm gonna do in this video is switch out these pickups for some brand new ones for Missing Link Audio, who are the sponsors of this video. Missing Link Audio sent me these, their OD1 humbucker set, which is apparently the first pickup set to use Alnico 2 and 4. So let's do a pickup comparison, stock versus boutique. But first, to make it fair, this guitar needs a little setup, a string change, a fret polish. So I'll take you to the bench and we'll do that first. If you're only interested in the A-B test between the stock Epiphone pickups and the ODRs, then I'll put some timestamps in here so you can skip to that bit. But if you're interested in seeing inside this almost 30-year-old guitar, then uh, don't skip ahead. With the strings off, it's time to polish the frets because they are grimy as heck. These are Stumac fret rubbers. Then I've got to condition the fretboard with some lemon oil from Color Tone. Then let's take a look at these pots. They are crackly and dirty and covered in finish polish. So I've got some contact cleaner. I'll clean those out and make sure they're up to scratch. <laughs> Time to string it up with these strings that Missing Link Audio also sent to me. These are their 10 to 46 Historics, which are pure nickel. Then it's time to set the pickups at the recommended height. So I can also do the same with the ODRs when they're in there. And the final stage of the setup is to intonate the guitar and get it ready for playing. I've just recorded the sound samples with the Epiphone Samsung pickups. And now I can switch in the ODRs so I can play you the stock sound samples versus the ODR sound samples back to back. The pickup swap is really easy because they're both humbuckers and they're both two wires, so it's just a case of switching them. But I recommend taking photos before you touch anything, just in case you need to refer to it later. And then it's just a case of making sure the pickups are the same height as the stock pickups were. Finally, we can hear those sound samples back to back. I'm going to play through the Victory Sheriff 25, which is a plexi style amp and get some nice open ACDC kind of rock chords to begin with. Right, now let's hear some cleans on the Fender Deluxe Reverb. I'm talking in between these different styles so you get a little bit of a palate cleanser because there's a lot of sound samples and I don't want your ears to get too tired. So let's do a little bit of middle position funk. I 
I can't do an SG video without doing some Tony Iommi. So here is Iron Man by Black Sabbath. I'm going through the Fender Deluxe Reverb, but I'm using the Rev G3 as some big old distortion. These are the settings. <laughs> Let's see how the bridge pickup responds to turning the volume pot down. This time again, I'm going through the Victory Sheriff 25. <laughs> It's time for some fuzz. I don't know if this is a huge thing for you, but it's a huge thing for me. Fender Deluxe Reverb with the Crazy Tube Circuits Motherload set to the Big Muff setting. <laughs> Let's take a break from sound samples for a minute and I'll give you some first impressions because I've just been listening to the things that you've been listening to. And f from a player's point of view, when I played those sound samples with the MLA pickups, I had that feedback that I've been wanting from this instrument for years. It gave me that extra power and I could actually hear the guitar come alive. And with the stock pickups, I never felt that I was getting enough, as I said at the top of this video. And way back in the 90s, I had no idea about the fact that you could change pickups or the fact that you could have pedals and amps and different combinations and they would sound totally different. I always knew that there was something missing with this guitar. I needed something hotter. These have more aggression in them. And finally, the guitar sounds like what it looks like. It's as though the guitar was a chihuahua in a costume and now it's a Rottweiler out there naked and snarling. I love it, but um, I will say something about the neck pickup is quite a surprise because it doesn't sound like a standard neck pickup, which when I think of a, an SG or a Les Paul neck pickup, I think of something that's big and fat and almost woolly, and this isn't. It's still kind of fat and big, but it's clear. It's almost like a bridge pickup without the aggression. It's, uh, it's, it's got a lot of clarity. Let, let's have a listen. So the stock Epiphones sounded very bass heavy and almost woolly and undefined, whereas the ODRs were sort of more balanced and clearer across the board. Almost not enough bass on the ODRs, so I definitely want that to have a bit more bass set either on the amp or a pedal. I'm not sure I would keep this neck pickup in there because I do like a little bit of fatness from my neck pickups, but this could be a great solution if you're running them in a Les Paul in a little tiny wafer thin SG body, you need as much as you can get. Onto the bridge pickup, this truly gives me what I've been missing in those lead lines. Have a listen to this. <laughs> So the difference is subtle, but it's there. And as the player, the guitar was giving me so much more to play with and those notes were staying rather than just dying. And as I've said numerous times in this video, this guitar always just kind of left me in the lurch and now it doesn't. By the way, I used a pedal in that part of the video. 
I ran through the Moxie, the Tube Screamer clone from Wampler. That was going into the Victory Sheriff 25. And I want to hear your comments on the sounds. What do you hear? What are the differences? Is it worth the $299 that these pickups cost? They're handmade in America. You can buy them as a single pickup for $150 or $299 for the set. So weirdly, no discount if you buy both together. But they do come with a capacitor, which looks like a high quality one that I did not put in the guitar because that would not be a fair comparison of just the, the pickups versus the pickups. However, now that I've got the sound that I want in that bridge position, I will absolutely be working more on this guitar. It needs new tuners for sure. I'll stick a new nut in it, probably some decent pots and those MLA capacitors would go lovely in here. And then you might see more of this guitar on the channel. The neck pickup, I'm not sure. Uh, it's so clear and, and almost, I don't know, it's almost not bassy enough. So I'm gonna have to play with that and let you know more about that in the future. But I'm gonna leave you with some more sound samples and I want to know what you think in the comments section. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next one.